Hi guys, and welcome back to some magical story time. The show where I may tell you one of my own stories from yesteryears, or stories from my life. But no, not this time round. It's back to Urban Legends we go, and this is our second go around with those. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you in this episode, I'm gonna tell you two stories. But which two stories am I gonna tell you? Well, you'll wait, and, well, you'll have to wait and see. Because here comes the first story now. And I think you're going to find it rather bone-chilling. It's a story called... The Babysitter and the Man Upstairs. Now, this story actually details the story of a babysitter who's babysitting a couple's children. Now, she's just put the kids to bed at this early stage of the story... And thought she might actually relax in the living room. But as soon as she sits down to relax, the telephone rings. And this creepy voice at the other end of the phone says... At ten thirty, I'm gonna come and kill the. Ch I'm, go I'm going to kill the children. Horrified by this, she rushes off to check the children. They're fine. Thinking nothing of it and not seeing anything suspicious, she returns to the living room to resume her relaxing. But no sooner than she does this, the phone rings again, and she answers it to hear the same creepy voice saying, check the children. I'm going to kill them at 10.30. So, at this point, she's freaked out and asked to call the police for help. And they get to work tracing the calls. While she goes off to check the children. Again. They're still fine. But on the third time she misses a check of the parents room. To see if there's anything suspicious in there. And returns to the living room. The phone rings again. And this time all she can hear is the screams of the children being slain. So she rushes off to find them slain. But when she returns to the living room this time, she gets a call back from the police. Saying they've traced the calls and they're coming from inside the house. Urging her to get out quickly before she gets slain. Because there's... Uh, and they're sending someone over to deal with the problem. Now when the police arrive, they enter the house and go up to the parents' room. To find a man sitting on the bed with the landline telephone on the bedside table. While the detectives go to investigate the children's room to find them slain. And then they tell the young lady she was lucky to have escaped the same tragic fate. As the children's bodies are taken away by the coroners. Now 
Now, guys, this is a cautionary tale about who to trust with your children's safety. And this comes from a time when landline, when landline phones were a thing. Of course, they're not anymore, so yeah. But also, you don't need to worry too much about this because it's not a true story. It's a legend. So you can rest easy on that one, I hope. <laughs> so, on now to the final story of the day. Or of the of the night, by the time you're seeing this. And the story that is going to be called... The Body in the Water Tank. Or Dark Water. Now... The story here is set at a California hotel... When guests, where guests are staying, but there's one guest in particular who is acting strange. And her roommate is getting freaked out by her strange episode, so she calls the front desk to request to be moved because her roommate is freaking her out. So, the front desk sends someone up to move the other girl out of the room into a separate room. So she can rest easy. Now here's where the mysterious thing starts to happen. A few days after this, the water starts to run jet black from all the taps and showers in the hotel, and guests start ringing the front desk complaining of a putrid smell. So someone goes up to investigate the complaints. They actually go up onto the hotel roof, which, by the way, only the staff can exit, um, sorry, only the staff can enter, and they look in the water tank to find the decomposing dead corpse of the young woman. And this was the cause, uh, the cause of the water running jet black and the putrid smell. So that's the story, guys. But do you think this actually happened in real life to someone? Or do you think it's a myth? I'll give you some time to work that out for yourselves. Okay, have you worked it out? If you said it's false, then I'm afraid, my friends, that you've falsified that answer for yourselves because this actually happened. Yeah, it did. It happened in 2013 at the Cecil Hotel in California where Canadian student 21-year-old Elisa Lam was staying. And one day, the water did start running jet black with a putrid smell. And when hotel staff went up to investigate, they found Elisa's dead body decomposing in the water tank. How she got there, no one knows. And she was acting strange. There's even hotel security camera footage to back that up. And, well, we have to be kind to the poor young lady because <sighs> she was bipolar. So, her strange episodes. Hmm, okay. So, I hate to burst your bubble on that one, guys. 
And if you think the story sounds eerily similar to that of a horror film, an American remake of a horror film from Japan that was released five years earlier, Dark Water, you'd be right. It's the events of the film playing out in real life. But no, the film did not predict it. So... It's just... An unfortunate coincidence. And even though this happened 10 years ago now, condolences go out to the Lamb family. So, guys, that's it for this episode of Some Magical Story Time. If you enjoyed it, Please like, comment, share and subscribe. And until next time, thanks for watching and have us a magical time.